Hold on, so they're trying to sell that this big evil bad guy became some sort of cat girl enthusiast? Even I could come up with something better than that plotline. What a tragedy. Yeah, he's done. Uh-huh. The driver of the truck was uninjured. <sighs> Looking pretty cloudy out there. Should have brought my umbrella. Two high school students thought by witnesses to have also been injured in the incident are currently missing. A search is underway. Requesting immediate backup. Over. Hmm. Nah, maybe this one instead. Well, that's what you get when you play Elden Ring for 65 hours straight. <sighs> what did I think I was doing? Like I could dodge or something? Huh. That's 363 yen. Or pull a gun. I'm just waiting to crash out. Uh, a Jagged Edge 10. Sir, can you hear me? Wait, what's with that fat guy and those kids from earlier? Stay with us. Tell me your name, sir. Can you hear me? <laughs> I get it. I'm dying, huh? <sighs> That's why everything's getting so cold. Not like I was going to amount to much anyway. Ugh, my eyes. That's way too bright. What is this? Discord light mode? Huh? Who's this guy? What language is that? Whoa, 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 hey! Buddy learned a personal space ever? We're in a hospital, this isn't- Don't look at me like that. I don't like that. Oh, god, that's so- No! Uh, gross! Gross! Burn my- Burn it off! Oh. Uh, hey there. Um, that is a very well-endowed nurse. Why- Why is she looking at me like that? You know, I'm seriously injured here, guys. I don't... Hello. Yeah. What is happening? Okay, that's just rude. I do not appreciate that. I'm gonna talk to someone about this. Especially your boss. What are you smirking at? I'll have you know I'm a... Huh? Huh? <sighs> Subaru would gently rub his eyes. The tiredness from the days of watching his favorite shows and playing hours of video games were finally catching up to him. Phew, man, that last boss in Elden Ring was sure kicking my ass. Oh well, it's done, it's done. So, I guess it's time to move on and go for a supply run to Lawson's. Huh, only 2.30 in the morning. That's not too bad. Well, time to head out. With this, Subaru would sneak out of his house, being careful as he unlocks his latch door, which behind it would be filled with a numerous amount of anime figures, manga, and the other neat collections that he's accumulated since he stopped going to school. Subaru would slowly creep out of his bedroom and make his way downstairs, where he would escape out of the front of the house, making sure to remember his keys, his phone, and his wallet so he could buy the supplies he was looking for. Oh, Subaru, as soon as he opens the door, would look up seeing that it was starting to rain. He quickly dodged back inside, grabbing an umbrella, and began his trek to the nearest Lawson's. It was only about a four or five minute walk. Not too bad. Even for a neat like myself, I can handle that, Subaru would think. Subaru would make his way over when he enters the gas station, noticing that the rain's getting a little heavier now. There's a some traffic, but it's pretty much dead for this time of night. Pretty much the only people out are delinquents, or the working adult class heading home from the overtime shift. Their trains having just arrived at the station with a long walk back home. Yep, I recognize that look of desperation, Subaru would say, in his mind of course, as he walks past a average Japanese salary man, whose eyes would look darkened and empty, hollow just like Subaru felt on the inside. But anyway, Subaru would walk into the Lawsons, a friendly chime echoing through the store which was mostly empty. The attendant at the front desk would seem mostly unbothered by Subaru's presence. Well, it is the night shift after all, so 
It's not like Subaru was going to cause any trouble anyway. He was just some high school kid. Subaru made his way over to the snack section, grabbing a bag of potato chips and looking through some other goodies. After deciding what his snacks for his next game binge would be, he would throw them on the counter, dropping a 500 yen note with it. Subaru would get his change, with there being a special lucky coin that he would receive back. He'd laugh, flicking it up and then throwing it back into his pocket as he grabs the plastic bag walking back towards the store entrance. But something would catch his eye. As he looks to the right, he would notice the magazine section, which he had somehow missed in this original stream of events. Once again, Subaru would be drawn towards the weekly manga section, taking a look, but something would catch his eye. Subaru would look up, realizing that there was something weird going on outside. He saw a rather large, rotund man, and two high school kids. What were they doing out at this time of night? The rain was getting heavier. Drops of rain pelted against the lawsons, the glass sliding down the glass side as Subaru would see his vision becoming distorted, looking out of the scene. Suddenly, he'd see on the right-hand side as he holds his hand up, looking at the bright lights, a truck driving at way too fast of speeds. Is the driver asleep? Before he can even process this, Subaru would drop everything in his hands, lunging out of the front door and full sprinting, yelling as loud as he can, saying, Hey! Get out of the way! But it would be to no avail. In front of his eyes, he would see the older, large man pushing the high schoolers out of the way as the truck is about to hit him. But Subaru goes into a tackle, pushing the fat guy out of the way and throwing him on top of the kids. Subaru would think he has just enough time to get out as well when he pushes his foot against the ground, his foot sliding on the water, the puddle rippling as he falls flat on his face, looking up just in time to see the lights of the truck ramming into his body. A sickly snapping sound would fill the air as Subaru's body gets rammed into by the truck at full speed. Subaru Natsuki's blood would spurt across the pavement. Subaru would try to speak but could only feel blood gurgling down his throat as the 40-somethings guy and the two high schoolers would come running over, shaking Subaru as the ambulance arrives. All he could hear would be the alarms, the sirens, his vision flickering in and out between a hospital room and the dark depths of his consciousness. Suddenly, Subaru would feel like his mind was falling to the floor. Looking up at the surgeons in the ER, his mind would sink into the darkness. As his mind is sinking, he could swear he heard a woman crying, screaming out his name. And for a brief moment, he saw her. Her beautiful silver hair, long slender ears, and a purple veil as dark as night. Subaru would see her eyes fill with tears, with his mind thinking one last, why are you crying? Before she'd suddenly disappear, with her hand reaching out to touch him and failing to reach him. A burst of light would fill Subaru's vision as if though the entire room had just changed. Because, well, it had. Subaru would hear a strange language. Subaru would try and turn his head looking around as he realizes that he's looking up at a different ceiling. Wooden ceilings in a hospital? Where am I? Subaru would think he's in some sort of European cottage looking around, seeing the more rustic furniture. He would see two strangers, an uh, adult busty woman with deep red hair, and a man who was picking him up and, oh god, get, get, get away from- uh, this has got to be assault. The blonde European man would be kissing Subaru on the face. He'd be waving his arms trying to get him to stop, saying, this is a hospital, I'm literally dying dude, leave me alone. Finally being released from this man's incredible grip and strength, wondering how he can even lift Subaru like that, Subaru would look up towards the person now holding him. Subaru's thoughts would quickly turn from the assault case he was about to make against this guy to, why are my hands so small? Subaru would hold his hands up, realizing as he had been trying to swing on this strange blonde dude, that his fists were now tiny and pudgy. These were not the strong thumbs that allowed him to best the Air Tree DLC. Subaru would look up, his eyes opening fully, as he realizes that he is a baby, looking at the large breasts and the golden-haired woman now looking down at him fondly, now speaking again in that weird European language. Thus beginning the life of Subrudius, which I'm just gonna call Rudius from now on since you guys know that Subaru has been reincarnated as Rudius Grey Rat. Congratulations on making it through the prologue for the brand new What If series dropping on my channel. What if Subaru was reincarnated as Rudius, shortened to Re Tensei, a crossover isekai what if between Re Zero, which I've covered on the channel before, and Mushoku Tensei, 
which I did make a video talking about the argument between Paul and Rudius like almost two years ago now when it came out. So I have watched both shows and I am actually reading the ReZero novels right now since I'm trying to catch up so I can create the new season for Subaru Sukuna. But nobody cares about the King of Curses. Let's focus on the real topic of today, which is Subrudius. Subaru inhabiting Rudius's body and how this changes everything. What's happening here? What happened with ReZero? Why didn't he get summoned when he died to the world of ReZero? Where is Satella, the Witch of Envy? What is going on? So we're going to be getting into all of that right now, starting with Subaru's new growth and what's going to happen here. One of the key differences between Subaru and, well, Rudius as we know him since we never learned his original Japanese name, is that he's not a 40-year-old sad degenerate. Degenerate, yes, but he is not a man who has failed through his entire life yet. Subaru still had a chance. He could have he could have turned out all right. I mean, he was a neat, yeah. He was locked in that room for an entire day, but still, still, you know, he, he, Subaru was a waste of space. Okay, let's let's get past that. He's also a pretty pretty bad character, which all things granted is why I thought of in the first place. Since the story of Mushoku Tensei has incredible character development for Rudius, and I want to see how Subaru would react to a lot of the situations. Plus, a little twist on the story, but we'll get into that later. The story is going to begin with Subaru as a baby, which from now on I'm going to be calling Rudius to be accurate for what people are saying, since that is his name. And I don't think Subaru's going to make a point of denying it or changing it. If you think he does, tell me why in the comment section down below. But if not, we're gonna keep going. Rudius as a baby would still be a little odd, and Lilia might think he's possessed, mostly for all the weird poses he does, and the way he babbles to himself. Rudius would barely ever cry, and he'd be particularly interested in trying to break into Zenith and Paul's study. She had no idea why. But anyway, Rudius being a small troublemaker was nothing of, out of the sort, especially being Paul's son. It was rather strange though that the baby seemed rather bashful when it came to Zenith or Lilith trying to uh, take care of him. Rudius would have this strange look on his face as if he was saying, no, don't touch me like that like a damsel in distress. Anyway, at this point Rudius is around a year and a half old, and he knows several things about his home. That being the village he lives in being Buena Village, he also knows that his father, Paul Greyrat, is a village knight, seeing his sword collection and first off thinking, holy shit that's cool I wish I had a sword, and second realizing that he was born into a pretty well off position if he believes this to be as medieval as a world as he is thinking, which he's not wrong. He doesn't know anything about the nobility yet or his connection to it, but he is aware that Paul has somewhat good standing in the village. Subaru would be pretty proud of this actually, thinking his father is some kind of knight in shining armor. Oh, he is so about to be disappointed. The one really odd thing about this though is that Subaru is like 18, 17, 18 years old when he dies and gets reincarnated, and that's roughly about the age that Paul and Zenith were when Rudius was born, so Subaru feels like they're roughly like the same age in his head. It's very odd, so he sees Paul out swinging his sword around and is just jealous, and he has this most awkward relationship with Zenith because it's basically like he feels like he's some dude just like touching her, so it's really uncomfortable because Subaru is not like that, like he's not creepy like that. He's a respectful simp to Amelia in the original, and I don't think he'd be as comfortable. So I could see him definitely being a weird baby. But anyway, he would quickly develop the skills to understand the language here, just as the original Rudius did, because Subaru, even back in his original anime and his original novel, was significantly smarter than most people. That is because he was physically gifted in his original world, and he was pretty good at school, and he just couldn't take out the pressure anymore, which is what caused him to be a need to begin with. But all that background story is going to come important later. For now, Subaru would just be interested in the world around him, trying to learn as much as he can, and wondering what there is to do. With no phones, manga, or anything really, like forms of entertainment, he would go and break into the study successfully one day, with him beginning to read all of the books in there, realizing he can't read, and slowly teaching himself to read which is a rather long and painstaking experience. One day when Rudius is around three years old, he'd be reading through a book about magic. 
Finally, something about magic. Now, this was cool. Rudius definitely wanted to get in on that. He wanted to learn all about it. Subaru would begin training his mana pool, realizing that he can create small bubbles of water, dropping them into a wash basin, and beginning to drain his mana pool day after day to the brink of exhaustion. This was about all he could accomplish right now, considering any time he tried to cast a spell he felt like he was going to fall unconscious, so simply producing the water was more than enough. Subaru would do this every single day for months, months turning to a year, and by this point Subaru is around 4 years old. Subaru would be standing on the second level of the cottage when he rips open the book, finally ready to tackle intermediate magic. He'd begin chanting, Supple spirit of water and princes of streams that flows through the earth. Sweep away all things with your hidden inner might. Splash flow. Huh, what a dumb sounding sp- Bah. Rudius would look up, seeing a humongous ball of water spiraling in his hand, ripping through the room. He could barely control it any longer as the ripples across the water would shake, the room now shattering as a huge hole would rip through the front of his house, the ball of water ripping across the fields and leaving streams of water flowing down like rain onto the farmers below. The explosion would have shook the entire house, with Subaru, well, Rudius, sitting on his butt, looking out in horror at the magic he had just created. Paul would come running to the room, crashing through the door, screaming, what happened? Hey, what's what's going on? Zenith would come shortly after with Lilith at her side, screaming, Rudy? Oh, Rudy, are you hurt? She comes running in through the door, now sitting down next to her toddler. Rudius would calmly say, No, no, I'm I'm fine. Paul would come looking through the straw roof, looking out and wondering if it was a monster or something. No, around here, there, there couldn't be any of those. Zenith would look down the ground, seeing a book with its spine up, the page being folded almost in half. Zenith would brush off the book, saying, Oh, Rudy, did you read this book out loud? She'd have a smug look on her face. Subaru would feel terror inside, wondering if he did something wrong. Maybe kids who can use magic get sent off to some dungeon somewhere. Or maybe they're illegal. Maybe I'm a fugitive. I'm a criminal. A child criminal. No, no, I can't go to jail yet. I'm still... I'm only four. Subaru would calmly say, uh, I apologize, as he begins dogazing towards Zenith. Zenith would get up and start cheering, saying, Hey, did you hear that? Did you hear that? I knew our boy was a genius. Paul would quickly say, This is an intermediate spell. Let's hire him a magic tutor right away. No, we haven't even taught him how to read yet. I'm sure Rudy's gonna grow up to be an incredible mage, she'd say. Rudius would sigh, relieved that he's not going to some magic prison for magic kids. At this point, Paul would sigh, saying, Wait a minute. We promised that if he was a boy, he was going to be a swordsman. But he can do intermediate magic at his age. As Lilith's walking out, she would calmly say, Why not teach him magic in the morning and swordsmanship in the afternoon? Proceeding to exit the door as it appears Zenith and Paul had made up. As the curtains come to a close for our first episode of this new story, we would see a familiar hat bobbing up and down the road of the countryside of Buena as we see a familiar cottage with its now newly renovated roof and siding on its second level. The rather short blue haired girl with two twin tails would walk up to the front stoop taking her staff and banging it on the front door, having read a notice about someone looking for a magic instructor. But we're going to get into that in the next part for what if Subaru was Rudius aka Re Tensei. If you guys enjoy this, you know what to do. There's some really nice looking buttons down there. It might be fun to just press them, you know, see what happens. But yeah, if you guys are looking forward to the story to come, make sure to comment down below your thoughts on the story of if Subaru took over Rudius's life in Mushoku Tensei. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace!